Hey there, Squirrel Army. How's it going today? In today's video, we're doing a deck tech around Commander Liara Porter. This is a Commander card that I feel threw under the, everyone's radar, uh, including mine. Uh, this is a pretty interesting Commander that whenever you attack, however many of your opponents you attack, uh, your spells that you cast uh, get cost X less for X is the number of opponents you attack, and you also exile the top X cards of your library, and until end of turn you may cast spells from among those exiled cards. So the idea being here that, yes, we're doing Boros attack, I guess, but at least we're getting something that Boros tends to not really get out of it. In fact, two things that... Boros tends not to get out of it, uh, both card advantage and mana advantage, ramp, you know, so that's pretty darn strong. So it's not a very too specific of a commander that really leads you down one path per se for the most part. Of course you could um, go down the path of just casting all of these really small efficient things and whatnot, uh, especially when you start saying, well, basically anything that's colorless would be for free um, or whatnot. So that would be quite powerful because so you could play a whole bunch of artifacts and things that do a whole bunch of different stuff and whatnot. And I'm sure there's different ways that you can do crazy, insane things with that. But hey, I, I, you know what I wanted to do? I wanted to just exile some cards, get some good old-fashioned Boros card advantage going, because that's basically all these colors get, that or taxing advantage or whatnot, um, and then just, like, play the game, play, you know, good cards that are in our colors. So the, honestly, when you're in these colors, it's a little bit difficult, but again, there are some really great cards, so I want to go through building a deck with this, so we're going to go away, and I'm going to show you this uh, deck list you can join the screw army by subscribing all right guys we're here having a look at the list that i came up with uh for the commander liara porter deck and i just want to check we've got 100 cards which we do and we've got a pretty high budget on this one but i have kind of splurged out because this is a deck for me as well um so yes i have put quite a few really good lands and whatnot into this deck um but obviously if you cut a lot of those lands a lot of the price does go away um where are the lands we've got 400 something dollars in the lands 480 dollars so if you cut that down you probably got maybe half of this deck's price uh, in the rest of the cards. So it'll still be 300 something dollars, but there you go. Like I haven't got um, the um, the most expensive land that's in here, which is the plateau. So I'm just sort of proxying that one. So, but anyway, that's not really relevant. Anyway, guys, um, yes, if you want to check out the deck list, uh, it will be down in the comments below. Um, so if you don't want to, sit through the waffle on and whatnot you just want to see the list and build it for yourselves or want to try it out uh you are more than welcome to as i said the list will be down there in the comments so if you don't really care about the rest of the stuff that's kind of going to go on in this one you can just go down there and check it out but if you're here for the discussion i will go somewhat through some of the cards i won't go through every single one of the cards because there's just too many cards to go through and whatnot i'm not going to go through the land base as a sort of say because most people will tune the mana bases of these decks to the way that they like it i won't go through too many of the mana rocks or the instants and sorceries because most of the instants and sorceries are just like removal and whatnot so that's not that interesting i don't think there's anything in the artifacts that we need to talk about like blade of selves is pretty nice giving our uh, equipped stuff myriad so we get to attack each opponent that's pretty nice for it um helm of the hosts really nice we just like to clone things clone our commander get extra 
um, effects off of whatever we want. It is a bit of mana to invest in, but it's really useful. Um, Rosette's kind of nice to have menace against our opponents so that, again, we're harder to block. Um, what else is in here? Uh, it's just ramp. Strionic Resonator can copy our commander's um, abilities or copy any other abilities that we have going on, so that's pretty useful. I um, think that's it, yeah. Yeah, pretty much that's it for, like, useful utility artifacts. The rest is just mana rocks and whatnot. So we'll mainly be going through the enchantments and creatures here, and I guess we'll go through the enchantments first because that's the smallest pile. Cannonade, uh, creature, when a creature uh, is attacking and is uh, under our control dies, we deal two damage to each opponent. So I don't really like these burn ping damage type cards but hey it does something else really useful for us uh, at the beginning of your post combat main phase if you, we attack with a creature this turn we exile the top card of our library until at the end of combat on next turn we can play that card so like the damage is like irrelevant for us if we ping damage people it's fine and I'm just fine with that because that's their like the opponent's own choice per se to um, take the two damage instead of taking whatever damage they would have taken from our creatures, so they still get punished in a way. It does deal it to each opponent, which is kind of weird, but it is kind of good in a way, because again, we get to deal that damage to each of our opponents, lowering their life totals and whatnot. Um, but yeah, it gives us that card advantage that we do need, so that's really useful. Furious Rise, at their end step, we control a power 4 or greater creature, we exile the top card of our library, we can play that card until, uh, we play and exile another card with Furious Rise, so we can play it to an, almost our next end step. Pretty useful. Uh, Legion Loyalty, this is just a house of a card. Especially in this deck, we want Mass Myriad in this deck. We want to be able to attack our each of our opponents uh, at all times so that we can get as much value out of our commander as we can. Plus, this is often just a win condition um, for our deck. Um, just being able to say, okay, well, now I can swing my entire army at everyone or all of my opponents at the same time is just super powerful. Um, Outpost Siege, well, I think most of the time we will choose Khans with this. Um, I don't think we'll ever choose Dragons, especially with my proclivity to not liking ping damage and things like that. So, but that's just me. I know that some people don't really care and just like, but I still think that Khan still is the better effect for the most part that most people choose. So I don't think we're too far off base there. Um, Rabble Rousing, I, I don't really mind the hideaway. I, I, I just think that sometimes I wish we could, I could find ways to flicker these things a whole lot more um, to get the hideaway again and again and again. But uh, when we attack, we create that many 1-1 one, one, uh, green and white creature tokens. Um, and then if we control 10 or more creatures, we may play the exiled card without paying its mana cost, which pretty nice. Uh, shiny Impetus, just to go to our opponent's things and um, give us treasures and whatnot, so that's pretty useful. Um, Dungeon Brawler or ta Tavern Brawler, Upkeep. Oh, oh yeah, at the beginning of Upkeep, we exile the top card of our library. Um, and our creature gets plus, oh, commander creature gets plus X plus O till end of turn where X is the mana value of that card and we play, may play that card this turn. So if we get lands, we're a little bit sad because we don't get a buff, but that's still fine. Um, Underseller Sweep, we take the initiative. Initiative's pretty useful. And when we attack, if we're, if a player you're attacking has the initiative, we create two, one, one. Soldier creature tokens that are tapped and attacking, which is pretty useful. So that can get us the initiative back. It also makes us more attackers. So pretty useful. And we will lose the initiative pretty darn easy. It's pretty easy to lose. Um, Valakut Exploration. Whenever we play a land, we can exile the top card of our library. And we can play... Um, yeah, we may play that card as long as it remains exiled. 
And at the end step, if there are cards exiled with it, we put them to our graveyard, and then uh, it deals that much damage to each opponent, equal to the number of cards that go to the grave. So, again, I'm not a huge fan of the ping damage stuff, but it's still doing stuff that we want to do and need to do, so that's still okay with me. Um, Jace's Blasting Cannons, we, at the beginning of upkeep, exile the top card of our library. If it's a non-land card, you may cast it this turn, and when if we cast our third spell, we can flip it, and it flips into a land, um, which can add red, sacrifice, um... At the Bastion, and it deals three damage to target creature or player, which, eh, not really that important, but, you know, it is there. Uh, Visions of Frexen at the beginning of your upkeep, exile the top card of our library, you may play that card this turn, beginning of the end step, if you didn't play the card from uh, exile this turn, we create a power stone token, um, so that can help us ramp into um, more things later, so that can be very useful, but we mostly want it for the exiling effect. Let's get to the creatures now. Uh, Adeline, first off, uh, whenever we attack for each opponent, we create a 1-1 uh, white human creature token that's tapped and attacking that player or planeswalker that they control. Um, the rest of the text there is pretty irrelevant for the most part, but that's the main thing that we do want this for. Uh, we want to be able to send a whole bunch of things at all of our opponents to get extra triggers off of our commander. So that's a useful way to do it. Aurelia, the war leader. Extra combats are a thing that we're going to want in a deck like this, and Aurelia is a pretty decent um, way to get those extra combats, it untaps everything, which is one of those things um, that you really need in an extra combat style of an effect. Um, the ones that don't untap all your stuff kind of leave you wishing that you hadn't, you had vigilance. Um, but anyway, uh, Angels of Tear, um, it has Myriad, which is really good, so it attacks each of our opponents, and when it deals combat damage to a player, we can draw a card if a player has more cards in hand than me, uh, than us. Uh, we can create a treasure if that player controls more lands than us. Uh, then we gain life equal if somebody has more life than us. But, hey, that one's the least relevant, um, obviously. Uh, Belborka, at the beginning of upkeep, we exile the top card of our library and we play that card this turn. Uh, the rest of the text there is pretty irrelevant. That's what we want it for. We want it for the uh, card advantage and whatnot, so that's what it's here for. Chaos Adventurer, we take the initiative when it enters, which, again, is pretty useful. Uh, when it attacks, we exile the top card of our library. If we've completed a dungeon, we may play that card without paying its mana cost. Otherwise, we may play that card this turn. Um, so that is very good. It does take a bit of time to complete the dungeon but yeah that's a that's a thing that we're going to have to live with a little bit it still gives us really good card advantage in the right way that we really want it and the initiative isn't bad it does give us a whole lot of really good effects um deep gnome terramancer it's just here to help us out with keep ramping and keeping up with our opponents so yep that's there delina it can copy Anything that we've got in our deck is really good with anything that has an ETB, and it's really good um, to create those extra um, copies of creatures that are tapped and attacking. Um, just makes it so much easier to attack our opponents and whatnot, or get through that damage that we do need to get through, so really useful. Duke Unda uh, makes one of our creatures get haste and myriad, Sometimes we'll use it for the haste more than the myriad, but the myriad and haste is obviously both really good. But, yeah, when we just played a creature and it doesn't have haste and we can't really do a whole lot with it, we do want that haste, so that is really useful. Um, the myriad is always useful no matter what, even if a creature can attack this turn uh, or whatnot. It, still getting that myriad off is so powerful that we really want a card like this. Esper Sentinel is just a good card that's here to help us draw cards when people don't pay for its effect. Uh, Itali, just 
one of those cards, I'm not a huge fan of it, but it's one of those cards that's just so powerful that you really need to kind of run it. So it's like, well, there's not many other options. Um, and I often just, unless people have instant and sorceries or whatnot from this, or my opponents have instant or sorceries, I tend not to just play anything because it just causes way too much confusion in the games that, or at least from my perspective, of, oh, whose card was this and whose card was that and which deck, you know, like, I don't care about taking other people's stuff and it just never works out for me because um, my opponents nine times out of ten don't have anything good so and nothing that really works with what I want to do. So, well, I might as well not bother and just, like, go, well, unless it's an instant or sorcery, I'm not going to worry um, or whatever. So... Just not going to worry about stealing their permits because it just leads to too much problems. But anyway, um, <clears throat> Eroas um, makes our creatures essentially have menace. It doesn't actually say that our creatures have menace, but it's, technically that's what it does. And then we prevent all damage that will be dealt to attacking creatures we control. So our creatures can't die in combat. So that's really useful for protecting our creatures and making our creatures harder to block. Uh, Kami, whenever a creature we cast a creature uh, a spell from exile, we put a counter on a creature we control, so it helps us buff up our stuff. And then when a creature that has a plus one counter on it, or an equipment on it, or an aura on it, uh, attacks or oh, one of our creatures, uh, we exile the top card of our library and we play it this turn. So it gives us the counters to buff our stuff up. Plus, it lets those creatures that have been buffed up with a counter or with equipment or whatever to then start drawing us more cards. So it's really useful uh, and can help us out quite a bit. Kolach, um, really good to take extra combats, as I sort of said. This is a really good one uh, for that. Kazul, it's more of a defensive card. I don't know if it's 100% necessary, but I just tossed it in here. Because, well, we do need defences at some point. It, the one thing that I don't like about this is that every single time I seem to get just attacked by flyers and it just really does nothing. So that's one very big weakness of this deck. There's not a whole lot of flyers in the deck. Um, and this really doesn't protect you from flyers. So maybe I want some. Uh, we want something else that helps us protect ourselves from flyers. So... I will think about it, but I, there isn't much in these colours, unfortunately, I don't think. Lelia, uh, again, just more card advantage uh, and whatnot. Also, it gets bigger for the number of cards that we exile, so that's really useful. Uh, Loyal Unicorn, if we can try our commander on the, our combat, our creatures uh, basically can't be dealt damage during combat, so... That's really useful. And they also gain Vigilance. So that's also pretty darn useful. So our creatures can't die in combat. And they can you know, protect themselves. Or we can protect ourselves by having Vigilance. Um, Mizio, similar to Itali. Basically the same as Itali. Just taking all those Exile cards. I often use it in the same way. Um... Morag, Fury of Akum, again, extra combats here, and it also buffs up our stuff for the number of times we've attacked with our creatures, so that's really powerful as well. Meow, uh, stops people from casting spells or activating abilities during our turn, and whenever we attack our, one of our opponents, we get a, um, a X, 1-1 one, one, so, uh, colorless soldier artifact creature tokens where X is the number of soldiers we control. So initially we'll get 1, then we'll get 2, 3, 4, so on and so forth. Um, still really good to protect us from, you know, people doing shenanigans on our turn. Um, next year, uh, when we cast a spell from exile, we can copy it and we can choose new targets for the copy. A permanent spell gains... Uh, copy gains haste in the beginning of the end step. We sacrifice the permanent, but that's fine. We'll often be able to do something with it that turn, so we really won't mind. 
We've got both the Odricks in here. Um, both of them do really useful stuff. One of them sharing all the keywords that we can ever possibly want. And the other one just basically saying opponents cannot block us. Um, so that's really useful as well. We're an aggro deck. We need to get in there. Uh, professional face breaker. Whenever we hit uh, an opponent, we create treasures and we can sacrifice treasures to exile the top cards of our library and we can play them this turn. So good for mana ramp and good for card advantage. So really useful. Stalwart pathlighter. Beginning of combat, if we have three or more different uh, powers among our creatures, our creatures gain indestructible until end of turn. So that's pretty darn useful. Whenever a uh, tectonic giant, uh, we can choose to deal three damage when it attacks or when it gets to be the target of a spell. I should have said that first, I guess, but whatever. Or exile the top two cards of our library, choose one of them, and we play that until end of next turn. Um... But, yeah, that's pretty darn useful. I don't really choose the three damage mode at all um, because, again, I'm not a huge fan of that ping damage style, but that's just me. Um, Urmbrask, beginning of upkeep, we exile the top card of our library and we play it this turn. That's pretty useful. It also does stuff to our opponents uh, whenever they would draw a card. Instead, they exile the top card of their library and they may play it this turn. Um, so, interesting effects, and Wild Mage Sorcerer, um, first spell we cast from Exile has Cascade, so we can just flip until we hit, find something that is equal or less, uh, mana cost, and play it for free, so that is really, really useful, and that is it for the cards in this, uh, and I hope you guys uh, found it interesting and enjoyed it. Um, and I hope to see you guys again in the next one.